So what I've been trying to show is that um, it's, it's very important to understand the question that the disciples are asking Jesus Christ. And it's um, important to also appreciate how Jesus Christ is, is answering the disciples. What, what does Jesus mean by his answer? It seems that most people are assuming, and I'm not sure if they're assuming rightly, that Jesus is talking about the end of, of the world that's facing us. And if he, if that's what Jesus meant, then what Jesus answered the disciples was a double meaning. Everything, and that's what a lot of religions are saying that that Jesus was answering the disciples for their day and for the future, all all combined together. When Jesus when Jesus replies, when, and we'll look at the reply, he's not saying, uh, "Okay, this is what's going to happen." Uh, as you face the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple, and this is what's going to happen after after you know two thousand years from now, when when I'm going to destroy uh, the the um, you know the world of the devil's world completely. Um, he he doesn't he doesn't really separate uh, or distinguish um, that in his answer. When the disciples are asking the question, um, you can see the translations are, are are trying to imply that that there's a, a future question that they're asking by saying, "What's the end of the world?" But as I was showing you, the New World Translation does not does not say that this, does not translate it that way. They're saying the end of the system of things, which could could mean simply the end of the Jewish system of things. So were the disciples just asking about the present, what 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 they want to you know what what's going to happen in their lifetime? You know who who cares about uh, uh, two thousand years from now? And did they did they even appreciate that the world would would continue on uh, for so long? Did Jesus spoke in riddles and and illustrations? I won't maybe riddles is not the right word, but he spoke in illustrations so much that. Um, he wasn't giving them giving them direct answers, so it was hard to really understand what what the disciples were were perceiving. Um, what I'm trying to propose, I'm going to talk a bit about. I, I I think that Jehovah's Witnesses get carried away on this, this idea of presence uh, uh, too much. Um, but I'm going, to, I'm going to propose a different question to simplify the the whole thing. You know, why not let's look at look at this this whole chapter at face value and say the disciples were simply asking about the destruction of of the the Jewish system at that time. And let's see by Jesus Christ's reply if 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 that might support that that uh, um, proposal. What was I gonna do? <laughs> um, okay, the, the question the question that that I'm pr I'm proposing is, you know, in verse three, I'll read it to you. So let's I'll show you the picture again, and let's just say the disciples asked this question. What is going to be the sign that the destruction of Jerusalem is imminent? Okay, that's all they're asking. Give us a sign that the destruction of Jerusalem is going to be imminent. Now, the the Romans are the ones that that carried out the destruction, but but it's like Jesus Christ was behind that, so it's like like his coming, right? How how do we know that that you? you're about to destroy the Jerusalem you know because these are God's forces at, at work here carrying out the destruction um, now now why why I, 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 th I think this idea of, of presence is 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 a silly tangent um, 
again, Jesus Jesus is is a, is about to be killed in three days, and and he's going to be resurrected uh, uh, um, three days after that, and he's going to appear to his disciples, and he's going to reassure them that he is alive. You know, he's preparing his his disciples for for life without him. Um, Jesus Christ has given his disciples uh, uh, power to heal and, 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 and do incredible things. And, and you can see that after Christ dies, the, the power and the spirit that, that moves through these disciples to even raise the dead uh, is more than enough evidence that, that, that Christ is present. Um, you know, and, and just the very, very fact of his, of his reassurance um, um, uh, after after his death, um, is 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 enough to know that Christ is with them. Acts chapter two, the pouring out of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. This was like forty days after, again, where they start speaking in tongues. This was uh, the most incredible uh, evidence that that Christ power he was present he he was alive he he had risen there was no doubt uh in in the disciples mind um that Christ was present so would it be reasonable that the, the disciples are, are asking Jesus Christ a sign of his presence does that does that does that really make sense when it was so evident and if really they, and, and if that was really the question, would not Jesus say in his answer to them, "You will know I am present by my outpouring, outpouring of Holy Spirit. You will know that you'll see people speaking of tongues. You will, you will be, you know, raising the dead. You know, this is what you will. This is the evidence of my presence." Um, does he say that? We'll read it together. Um, that he doesn't mention that once, you know. Um, so I mean, I don't want to get it into too much, but but in 1914, they're, they're talking. Jehovah's Witnesses believe Jesus Christ is invisibly present. Since Jesus went to heaven, um, he. Christ has always, God's Spirit has always been present since the beginning of time. Uh, his, the works of God uh, are, are always present. They're, they're, they're manifest, they're evident, as, as are the works of the devil. Um, evil is, you know, you see the fruitage of the Spirit, you see the, the works of the flesh and the devil. Um, it, Christ would say they're, they're very manifest and obvious um, in people. You don't, you don't need signs those are the signs right you know you don't need earthquakes and 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 uh, um, other monumental earth-shaking uh, um, events to, to to know that that God is 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 present so um, um Let's, let's look at his reply. Verse, verse 4. And in answer Jesus said to them, Look out that nobody misleads you, for many will come on the basis of my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will mislead many. You're going to hear of wars and reports of wars. See that you're not terrified, for these things must take place, but the end is not yet. So he's not talking about his presence. He's sort of answering that question about the end. They want to know uh, what is, when is the destruction of Jerusalem imminent. He's saying you're going to see these things happen, wars, reports of wars, but that's not, that's not time for, for Jerusalem to be destroyed. That's not the sign of, of me going to destroy Jerusalem. 
if you also notice the the things that Jesus is answering uh, are things that have always uh, taken place uh, in 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 history for the most part for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there will be food shortages and earthquakes in one place after another all these things are a beginning of pangs of distress then people will deliver you up to tribulation and will kill you and you'll be objects of hatred by all the nations on account of my name so you know you know the persecution that the early Christians were, were facing um, because they were speaking in the name of Christ Jesus then also many will be stumbled and will betray one another and will hate one another and many false prophets will arise and mislead many and because of the increasing of lawlessness the love of the greater number will cool off but he that has endured to the end is the one that will be saved and this good news of the kingdom will be preached in all the inhabited earth for a witness to all the nations and then the end will come uh, so so again you see uh, you know there was the preaching work that that happened before um, verse 15 therefore when you catch sight of the disgusting thing that causes desolation as spoken of through Daniel the prophet standing in a holy place let the reader use discernment then let those in Judea begin fleeing to the mountains So as far as I was, as it was explained to me, um, that the disgusting thing causing desolation was when the Roman ar army came and surrounded the the, the city of Jerusalem and uh, um, killed everybody that, well, first of all, they surrounded and then they, they retreated. And then they came back, I don't know if it was a couple years later, um, and... Uh, um, then they surrounded the city again, and um, and this time they they wouldn't let anybody leave, and they burned it and c killed everybody. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and it was a uh, horrible, horrible end. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing at that. Um, so the he says when you see the disgusting thing that causes desolation, or, or the Romans that that surround the city it says then let those in Judea begin fleeing to the mountains um, and then after verse 21 that there will be a great tribulation that has not occurred since the world's beginning um, so at that time that that was that was the answer to their question the disciples said when is the destruction of Jerusalem imminent and basically in verse 15 when you see the Romans surround uh, the, the the city that's that's my son that's that's you know you're gonna see earthquakes all these other things but when you see that that's that's when it's time for you to get out of G Judea because that's when uh, it's going to be destroyed okay um, it seems like a very very simple question and answer but um, um, it seems like a lot of religions want to, you know, make make this, uh, um, you know, custom tune it to to their. I mean, Jehovah's Witnesses want to support their 1914 and invisible presence and and say the last days and, and they're the ones that are are preaching uh, um, worldwide. You know, everything Jesus said here is is talking about about the last hundred years that that we've been living. Um, or was Jesus just simply talking, answering the, the, the disciples about about what they were going to face in, in Jerusalem? Um, I just want to mention that some of the things that, that, that Christ did not mention in his answer that is unique to our generation. Okay, uh, Overpopulation, terrorism, uh, and environmental issues such as the, the depletion of the Earth's resources, carbon emission, ozone destruction, pollution of the air and the water, destruction of the, the rainforest, 
uh, the melting of the polar ice caps, world economic crisis and, and unemployment Christ Jesus did not mention uh, any of these things that are, are, are very defining of, of, of our world. Uh, he doesn't talk about, about technology um, advancing or like the internet, cell phones, uh, global communication, just, just things that, that, that really mark uh, what we're dealing with. You see his answer was, was very general about things, wars and earthquakes and, and food shortages, problems that have um, really beset mankind um, since, since the beginning. Um, again, I'm trying to, to, I haven't got to my point with the faithful and dis dis discreet slave here, um, but I'm going to do another segment that will, uh, see, the, the purpose was to show the context of Matthew 24, which verse 45 falls into, uh, so, uh, so that's, um, what I'm going to get into next time.